Strong, rugged, resilient, hard, unbreakable. These four riders are all of that and much, much more. Find out exactly how they've made the grade in this, the latest instalment of GCN's Toughest Riders Ever. Many of you in the comments section have been asking for this next person to be included in one of these lists, and we couldn't agree more. And that person is Mark Beaumont, long distance adventurer extraordinaire. And the Scot is as tough as they come. Indeed, pain, discomfort, lack of sleep, psychological distress and injury were all taken in his stride. Pretty much part of the job description, to be honest, as is the ability to suffer. En route to setting a new world record for circumnavigating the globe on a bike of 78 days, 14 hours and 40 minutes, which equates to 240 miles a day for a grand total of 18,039 miles. He endured just five hours of sleep per night. And in fact, on day nine, he had a crash which resulted in the splintering of the tooth and a fracture to his right arm, but he just carried on regardless. And when we asked him how he coped, he said, Man, it's only pain. One of the most infamous days of racing in the modern cycling era was stage 14 of the 1988 Giro d'Italia, where a soon to be beleaguered peloton rode up the Garvia in a blizzard. Andy Hampson, who would go on to win the race, the only American ever to do so, had never actually ridden that climb before in his life. Yeah, equipped against the Arctic elements by some gloves that his director sportive behind a ski shop only the very night before he set about the Gavia with the Malia Rosa as his main objective. And he duly rode pretty much the entire field off his wheel. They were unable to cope with the ferocious pace that he set and they couldn't cope as well with the inhuman conditions of that day. By the summit, Hampston resembled a snowman, but by the finish, he'd written himself into the history books on a stage which would be forevermore in the folklore of cycling. His then teammate, Norwegian rider Dag Otto Lauritsen, had this to say on the stage. I was on my bike, crying on the descent. I don't ever feel sorry for myself, but it was one of the moments when, apart from being a commando and doing extremely hard things, I've never suffered so hard in my life. Yeah, so hard in fact that the newspaper that sponsored the Giro d'Italia, the Gazzetto della Sport, called the stage the day the big men cry. Winner of the Women's World Cup in 2011, Dutch woman Annemiek van Vluten is made of stern stuff with the resilience and fortitude to bounce back time and time again from adversity. First up, there was her crash at the World Team Time Trial Championships in 2014 when she was in a medal winning position. And in August of 2015, she was hit by a car whilst out training in Italy, sustaining a collapsed lung, three broken ribs and a broken collarbone. Yeah, worse was yet to come in 2016 when, whilst leading the Olympic road race in Rio, she crashed horrifically on that treacherous descent, suffering very serious concussion as well as three lumbar spine fractures. Yet quite remarkably, she was back up and riding within 10 days. And then in 2017, illustrating her quite incredible self-belief and not to mention dogged determination, she scorched around the time trial course in Bergen in Norway, putting all that heartache and misery behind her to become world champion for the very first time. Three times Giro d'Italia winner, Fiorenzo Magni was a true pioneer of the sport, but as enterprising as he was resilient and gritty. Now, in an era when few riders travelled outside of their home countries to race, he went to Belgium in a bid to win the most prestigious of single day races there, the Tour of Flanders. To do so, he decided to equip his bike with wooden rims, but also to wrap his handlebars with foam in order to help protect himself from the notoriously brutal Belgian cobbles. Quite successfully, I might add, because he went on to win the Ronda three times in succession from 49 through to 51, which earned him the nickname the Lion of Flanders, way before Johan Museo. Incredible. But Manu was most famously known for his exploits in the 1956 edition of the Giro d'Italia, where he crashed on stage 12 and broke his collarbone, but refused to get it put in a car. So, unable to use his left arm properly, what he did, he got a piece of inner tube, put it between his teeth, and tethered that to the handlebars to help with his steering. Yes, you heard me right, but 
the story isn't over yet. No, unsurprisingly, he was having a little bit of difficulty in controlling his bike. So he ended up crashing, breaking a bone in his upper arm and ending up in an ambulance unconscious. However, as soon as he regained consciousness, he also went straight back to the peloton, who had decided to wait for him in awe at the courage that he was displaying. And he duly got to the finish. And not only did he get to the finish, he finished in second place that's overall. That's nuts. Beat that, I mean, that, that's tough, isn't what it? What a story, what a story. I would certainly hope you enjoyed the latest edition of the toughest riders ever. There were some pearls in there. There were, yeah. Uh, let us know who you think deserves to go on, go on this quite exclusive list of riders by leaving your comments in the section just below this video. And if you haven't yet subscribed to the Global Cycling Network, you will see a globe on the screen. All you've got to do is click on that. Yeah, now for the aforementioned interview that me and Cy did with Mark Beaumont, and last GCN special, click just down here. And for the Toughest Riders Ever, Volume 2, click just down here. I thought we were going to throw to Dan Lloyd's Top 10 Scars.